Welcome back to Wargaming World and to a game of Chain of Command. We're back in 1940 and it's uh, an attack on an objective and this is the objective, this hill. The Germans are repositioning and uh, getting ready for another attack but in the meantime they've left a platoon to delay the British as they advance and uh, the British need to take this hill in order to win the game. Now the British will be approaching from this end of the table but there are some challenges that they've got ahead. Uh, the first is that it's not the only hill. We've got one here as well and uh, depending on where the Germans have the uh, jump off points we might find that the British need to sweep across and clear this hill first. We also potentially have a problem with the uh, watermill. Then the British can only get across this river at two points. There's a footbridge and there is a bridge, a stone bridge, uh, strong enough for uh, vehicles before we get to our objective. So just a quick word about the uh, table itself. It's an eight foot by three table and for those who've seen lots of the other videos previously, uh, you can see that uh, we've got some uh, additions and the additions are the two hills that I've put together one of those things that you don't see a great deal in various war games and I thought I'll add them just to uh, get a little bit of uh, variety onto uh, onto the tabletop and then the use of the river as well something I like to put in and uh, see whether we can get uh, some kind of action here over these two bridges so we start off with the patrol phase so for the defenders for the Germans we use four patrol markers and I use these at Fallschirmjäger the British have got an option of three or four, so I'm just going to use three, and this is our three British uh, patrol markers. Before we start, we'll see how many free moves the British will get. So three, that's going to be three moves. Right, so uh, that's the first three free moves, and uh, all three of them are just behind that church. Okay, so this is the starting point for the Germans with the four patrol markers. Let's just have a look at the force morale, uh, then we'll know who does the next uh, move in the uh, patrol phase. So uh, both the Germans and the British are going to be uh, a nine uh, with a four and a three and therefore the British will have the next move in terms of the patrol phase because they're the attacker. Right, the patrol phase is complete and the three British uh, patrol markers, uh, one here just in front of the watermill and then the other two up towards the hill. Germans uh, just at the bottom of the hill there and uh, also one here in front of the bridge and then the other two are still all the way back there they didn't move so that's where we uh, we go from there so we have to see what the jump off points will look like okay so following on from the lines uh, between the two Germans and the patrol marker we have our first British jump off point here and the banks of the river and then we have our second at the base of the hill there and the third is just up behind the trees at the back of the hill. Germans on the other hand have what I think is uh, some better positions. One jump off point right in this uh, uh, building, this shattered uh, farm building. We've then got another just behind this wooded area and then finally back here in the uh, farm area and uh, we've got one just by the, uh, the back wall there. Right, let's see what we get for British support. Uh, it's 2d6, we ignore 11 and 12, and the Germans get half of this number. So the British will get uh, six support points, the Germans three. Should also mention that we've got uh, British regulars, which are minus one as their original force, and the Germans are uh, second wave Germans, so therefore they're, it's a minus one too. So yeah, just to uh, confirm the supports will be six for the British, three for the Germans. Right, let's take a look at the forces. Uh, we'll start with the British, uh, the BEF. It's a uh, regular platoon, which starts on a, a minus one for the troop type. We've then got uh, the forces itself. In terms of the platoon he HQ, we've got a lieutenant, a senior leader with pistol, a platoon sergeant, which is a senior leader with rifle. We've got a two inch mortar and two crew. We have a, a boys anti-tank team, see whether we want to uh, use that uh, or not through the game and then we've got three sections all led by a corporal with rifle 
we've got a Bren team with uh, three men and seven rifles. British also have six support points, so we're going to have a Bren carrier for three points. Uh, for two, we're going to have an extra uh, mortar, an extra two inch mortar, and then with the final single point, we're going to have a Thompson machine gun with one of the junior leaders. So let's have a look at the Germans. Uh, the Germans are a second wave division and therefore it has, uh, it's a regular troop type and as the British, its platoon force rating is minus one. Uh, it has uh, for its platoon headquarters, we've got a lieutenant with pistol. We also have a senior leader with a submachine gun. We then have uh, its uh, three squads all the same, we've got a junior leader with a submachine gun, we've got an MG34 with three crew and then six rifles. We've then got three points for support, so we're gonna use an off-table machine gun. So uh, that'll be in a, a fixed position once used, and then we'll see how that uh, influences the game. Right, okay. Phase one, British to go uh, first as they're on the attack. Let's see how we uh, start off, and that looks a good roll. We've got one for the chain of command dice, and uh, then we've got uh, three threes and a four. Right, first thing I'm going to do is to bring on the uh, Bren team for the British. Uh, fast vehicle, so it's got 3d6 plus uh, six dice in total. So uh, we've got uh, 15 inches. Okay, so we've got the Bren team uh, come on and uh, in position. Right, good start for the British. With one of the threes, we've brought on a section. They are tactical. We also brought on with the four, the senior leaders. The guy at the back there is also got the submachine gun. We then pan across and look onto the uh, onto the hill here. This is where we've got uh, another uh, British section. That's come on uh, tactical, and uh, it's also on Overwatch. Okay, so first uh, German phase. Two for the chain of command dice. It takes them uh, up to two, obviously, and then a one, three, and a four. Okay, nothing for the Germans, so straight back to a British phase. And uh, another for the chain of command dice, taking it up to two, and a two, three, four. Right, so we're going to move with the three. Uh, we're going to move the uh, Bren carrier. It's got to go over this hedge, so the way we do it is to roll three dice because it needs to move fast to get over it. We remove the lowest dice and then with the remaining two dice just make sure that they're not the same. If so, it gets stuck on the hedge and then we need to roll in subsequent phases about getting off the hedge. Okay, so first of all we remove the lowest dice which is a four uh, and then we get two sixes. So unfortunately it's uh, immobilised and stuck on the hedge. Uh, the only other movement is going to be the senior leader is going to get this section to move uh, tactically. So it's just 1d6, just two dice, uh, two inches rather. Bad luck there for the Bren carrier, but uh, German phase, uh, German double phase, we've got one for the chain of command dice, uh, takes it up to three, got a one and a three. Right, the Germans aren't bringing anything uh, on. I'll point out as well is that with the five, that's how we activate the uh, off-board machine gun, but that isn't firing as yet also. So, second phase, I drop down one dice, so I only use four dice on the second phase, and uh, we've got two fours and a three. Again, I'm not gonna do anything with the uh, Germans there. I want to uh, see how far the British get, what their deployment is before we go. So it's a British phase. So, um, we've got two ones, a three and a four. We've got a five for the chain of command dice, takes it up to three. Uh, with those ones, uh, the British can also bring on their support unit in terms of the mortars. Right, with the two ones, I'm bringing on both of the uh, two inch mortars, and they're gonna start firing smoke at the uh, objective target uh, up here on top of the hill. Okay, so let's see where the uh, mortar lands. Uh, both of them exactly uh, where they want, which is right inside that uh, ruined building. Right, with the three, we're going to see whether we can get this uh, Bren carrier uh, off the hedge. You get a five and six, uh, but certainly don't get a one. That's a five. So 
we're going to say we're going to reverse off the uh, off the hedge and finally with a four we're just going to move the uh, section along with the uh, senior leader to uh, to move further forward another 1d6 moving tactically and this time it's six inches so at the end of that phase uh, very effective uh, the mortar fires on top of the uh, of the farm which is the uh, ultimate objective and then further down we've got the british advancing here uh, getting uh, past or going towards i should say the water mill on the edge of the river german phase uh, two for the chain of command dice uh, or we could use our off-board machine gun if we wanted uh, a one and a two well, the germans are happy to wait and uh, takes uh, the chain of command dice to five and we're back to the british Uh, one for their chain of command dice, taking it to four, and then we've got a one, two, three, four. Right, I'm going to use the one with the Bren carrier. Uh, again, we're going to try and make this move. Let's not get a, a double, get over this hedge. Oh, crikey, but it's done exactly that. All I'm going to do here with the four is the senior leader is going to order this section to continue to move up tactically, but it's also going to move the two mortar uh, teams uh, just to move them up uh, as well, close behind it. So the section moves uh, tactically, only one inch. Each of the mortar teams is moving tactically. Uh, six and five inches uh, respectively. Right, I'm going to move to the German phase. I'm not going to deploy the final British section and uh, the senior leader until we get an idea about where they're really needed. So uh, Germans, uh, one, two, four and a five. Right, I'm going to use this as a marker. Uh, the British are making such heavy weather of advancing, I am going to start firing with the off-board machine gun. Now, what we have to do here is to show a line. So that line is going to go across this bridge and up to the unit there on the hill. So that's going to be the straight line here, so I'm going to be able to uh, follow that. And the way it works is that you have uh, ten dice. Uh, it's going to be fives to hit. and. Uh, We'll see the uh, the effect as we go. Now it's fives to hit. Uh, they are tactical, so therefore um, it's going to be uh, four, fives and sixes when it comes to casualties. But let's see how many are hit. Quite a few. So that looks like uh, five hits. Now they are in um, effectively soft cover. So uh, we'll say the two blue dice are the machine gun team. Black dice are the rifles. See the impact. Uh, there's a man killed in each team, and we also have a point of shock on the rifles. Let's just check if it's the junior leader. One or two it is. No, it isn't. So they take uh, two casualties. Now they are on Overwatch. However, you can't hit the uh, machine gun team. So uh, therefore, we're going to remain on uh, Overwatch. But uh, yeah, taking some uh, casualties straight away. Nothing else from the Germans. So it's a British phase and uh, well four twos and a four right it's not a great round for the british in that uh, we don't have a one or a three so we can try and get the uh, bren carrier forward so it's been very uh, disappointing anyway uh, use the two twos together so we're going to make it into a four so where uh, the three command initiatives from there will be to move uh, the section forward again um just for one d6 and to fire both of those mortars we'll both fire smoke uh, from the jump off point over here, I'm going to bring on uh, the final section and the uh, senior leader. I get this uh, unit moving and then finally the two up there on the hill, get them off the hill and uh, move them forward and out the way of the, uh, uh, of the fire from the machine gun. Right, I'm going to move this section at the double and uh, try and get them off the, uh, off the line. Gonna, both teams are going to take uh, a point of shock and let's see how far they go. Uh, looks helpful. That's 13 inches. Right, I'm going to have uh, smoke fired at the uh, footbridge and then further away over there towards that hill. Footbridge. And it's a one. Let's see how far that uh, moves. Second mortar. A three. Okay, so the first one's six inches to the right of the target, which means actually it's just at the edge of the river here. And this one, because there's line of sight, means that it uh, lands where it was uh, aimed. So uh, that's really uh, blocking the machine gun now to fire towards uh, the uh, section. So that's been quite effective. 
Right, we've got the final section on with the senior leader and uh, they are tactical. Finally, we've got the unit next to the water mill moving 1D6, that's four inches. So we've got all the British on, uh, but uh, none of the Germans so far. So no, anyway, it's a German phase. And uh, so we've got a four, two fours in fact, uh, a one and a two. We pass again with the Germans, so back to the British. And we have uh, now two fives, so it can take us to uh, a full chain of command dice. We've got a one, so we could either have a mortar or we could try again with the uh, Bren carrier and uh, a four. Right, well, with the uh, two sections advancing there, uh, we're going to move this one at the double and we're going to use the senior leader. So uh, uh, we've got the movement at the double and then uh, we can remove points of shock as well. So uh, that's what we'll do with the four. And uh, with the one, we're going to try this Bren carrier. Bren carrier first, five and six, we can get off the hedge. One, and we're stuck. That's well, neither, so it's still there, so it still can't advance. Let's see how far we can go with the section moving at the double. Seven inches. So that's the end of the phase and it's going to be uh, the Germans next. But you might want to ask yourself the question. We can see the British advancing here. This is where they need to get across these two bridges. And we've got our German jump off points. One behind the wood, one at the farm and then one with the uh, smoke up there. We've only got five points on chain of command dice. Uh, but the question you'd ask yourself is when will I deploy? When will you bring the Germans in and start firing down on these advancing British? You might wait all the way until they start getting across the river, uh, but uh, that might be too close. So uh, I'd uh, be interested in your thoughts if you came back uh, with suggestions uh, either on the YouTube uh, channel or on the uh, Facebook group, the France 1940 uh, Facebook group. Well, it is a German phase. And uh, no fives again. We've got uh, two twos, a three, and a one. So we really could uh, deploy if we like. Right, I'm not using the other two, but with what we have, I've made two threes and I've added, I've put two squads into the woods here. So we're going to fire with two light machine guns. Uh, not everybody can fire in terms of where the jump off point is, which is just here, but I'm going to have three rifles and the machine gun firing. Uh, each time and in addition I'm also going to add machine gewehr to both sections with the uh, junior leader. So this will be the target, uh, the section for uh, both of the German squads and it's going to be 13 dice with each needing fives because it's 20 inches so it's uh, effective range. Fives to start off with. So let's see how many that is. Right that's five hits, uh, three on the rifles, two on the machine gun, blue being the machine gun and they are tactical so that's actually no effect well it was very ineffective the second uh, squad needing fives only four hits uh, but more uh, effective so got two points of shock on the machine gun one on the rifles well i expected that to be much much worse for the british but it wasn't and uh, so now i have a one two three four Right, lots of things to do with the British here, but the first one is to try the Bren carrier to see uh, whether we can progress. Can we get off this hedge to start off with? Six, yes we can. So it reverses, and uh, so it can try and move uh, next turn. Senior leader here is going to order the two mortars to fire smoke in front of the uh, wood, and then with the remaining uh, command is going to move this section further up the road, see if it can get past the hedge. First mortar. Uh, right on the money and second mortar exactly where it needs to go right so as you can see the mortars have uh, blocked the vision out uh, in front of that uh, uh, wood now the section needs to move um, but we need to deduct two points of shock um, from at uh, one section and one from the other so uh, first of all moving 2d6 minus 2 uh, so it's going to be four inches four inches and ten inches respectively. I just needed to check uh, which teams it was and the Bren team are the ones with the two points of shock so they haven't made the cover uh, whereas uh, the rifles uh, they have. Right so I'm going to move this section forward uh, we're going to try and get over the uh, hedge so we're going to roll 2d6 losing the lower 
uh, of the two dice. I'm also going to move that uh, section as well but uh, similarly we've got some differences in terms of shock so that uh, section might split as well. Start off with the one going over the hedge uh, I can go four inches. On the hill it's the rifle section to minus two here so it's five inches they can go. Behind them is the Bren team and that's just two inches. Right so the British more or less have uh, got themselves in a relatively convenient position uh, to rush this bridge however the problem they've got is of course that we still have the smoke. Now where uh, the British could end the turn at this point because I've got a full chain of command dice however I don't particularly want to do that uh, with the uh, German machine gun teams here so let's uh, just pass to the German phase. Right still no fives so the Germans can't end the uh, turn uh, so we have uh, a four for a senior leader if we want to bring that on uh, two ones and a two. Right I brought a senior leader on for the Germans but I haven't really done anything else. Uh, I think the British really need to uh, end the turn so uh, they're just going to sit and wait uh, but he is going to put uh, both of these sections uh, squads I should say on overwatch. Right British phase one for the chain of command dice so we've got uh, one for the uh, second one and then we've got a one a three and a four so let's see if we can do something potentially with this Bren team as well. Right with a one I'm going to move the Bren team uh, back to its original section and work out whether it takes a, a further command which it might do but uh, nobody else is moving anyway this section because with the four I'm going to get the senior leader to take off uh, three points of shock off the uh, unit uh, that it's with or at least right next to and then with the other three I'm going to try and get this Bren carrier to uh, advance. Let's get this Bren carrier into the war and it can uh, so it can move nine inches. Okay so we've got the Bren carrier uh, moving forward. Move this team uh, 2d6 minus two that's fine. Okay a bit of chaos here with the uh, British. I still think that the uh, team and the rifle team nearest to me are still separate because I think it's going to take a command uh, initiative from a senior leader to bring them together again and then we have our two uh, further sections ready to attack across the uh, stone bridge however they're waiting at the moment with the uh, covered by the smoke that's why we can't get the off-board machine gun firing into that densely populated group there we've also got eventually the Bren carrier moving so this is going to move uh, into the game so it can move and support but it can only go across the river itself over the stone bridge right over to the Germans. Let's see how the Germans go. Ah right now that's significant. So 1-5 we've got it we'll take it to a full chain of command dice. Uh, we've got uh, a 1, a 4 and a 3 and another 5. Um, now, I can't end the turn here and then use the off-board machine gun. But certainly if we do end the turn, then we'll get rid of all the smoke uh, at the end of this turn. So let's see what we do with the 1, uh, 3 and the 4. The other 5 at the moment will just start a new chain of command dice. Right, uh, the Germans have a 1, 3 and a 4 remaining, uh, as well as the two fives. What I'm going to do is that I'm going to uh, put the final squad up in that farm along with a senior leader and then with the uh, five I will end the turn. It does mean, however, that uh, as well as the smoke disappearing I won't have any overwatch so I'll have to remove that from these uh, squads down here but I'll just set that up uh, in a second so it's going to be the British phase as we start turn two. So we're at the start of turn two and uh, everybody or every uh, element of the forces is on the table we have our offboard machine gun here and uh, we've then got two German squads uh, with a senior leader in this wood and we've got the third up there in the objective with a further senior leader. The British as they advance they've now got three sections up here they've got some cover 
but realistically they're looking to try and get across this stone bridge. British support in the uh, two mortars and we also have our Bren carrier here just to see how we can get some kind of cover organized uh, so that this infantry doesn't simply be uh, wiped out as it gets across the bridge. So let's see how they do it. It's the British phase next. Right, so British phase, start of uh, turn two. Really need some ones here, I think, for some smoke and uh, possibly a double phase as well. So let's have a look. And uh, well, we've got one. So we've got a one, a two, a four, and another uh, another point for the chain of command dice, the second dice. Well, with a one, first thing I'm going to try and do here is to drop some smoke there. Got line of sight, just need a good roll. And a five, right, it drops exactly where we need it. Okay, so we've got a two. So this first section is going to move at the double, try and see how far it can get uh, across the bridge. Both teams are going to take a point of shock. We'll see how far they go. Uh, it's uh, 10 inches. Okay, the senior leader nearest to us, so it's that one there. We have three commands. It's going to order the Bren team to fire covering fire at the farm up there, that farm building. With the rifles, uh, he's going to order them uh, to move tactically and order the uh, section in front to move it's going to have to move normally because some of its unit has got to get across that hedge so it's a bit of a, uh, a minus for that so we'll re uh, remove the lowest number i'll just have to work that out in a second the bottom line is that uh, we've got uh, both of these sections moving forward it'll be only really about halfway behind the first section which is advanced and we've got covering fire being fired at the germans up here so a little complicated but for the first section that's moving where it's still going across the hedge in part it's only going to move a couple of inches forward which means that the rifle section behind it isn't really going to move so as was the case uh, ever going to be likely uh, the british have uh, got into a bottleneck here at the corner and uh, they've been held up uh, by their own coordination and that means that this unit are somewhat isolated as they advance across the bridge and uh, we now move to the German phase. Okay, uh, not a great uh, roll and um, so we've got uh, two twos and two ones. Right, with that roll uh, each of the German squads can fire and uh, it's going to be some minuses because it's going to be a challenge to hit the British behind the hedge, things like that, but uh, they can still all fire. Okay, first squad firing at the Bren team here, needing fives. That's four hits. Uh, the black dice here are going to be the uh, Bren team in soft cover. Uh, so that's one killed uh, with the rifles. Is it the leader? No, it isn't. Second uh, squad firing. Uh, again, it's fives. Same target. Just two hits this time. And we have a point of shock. One on the rifles, one on the Bren. Now the machine gun team and some of the rifles uh, in the farm are going to fire at this unit just coming across the bridge. Uh, they're just in close range we lose uh, sorry it's a minus one in terms of being under covering fire so it's fives this time with 13 dice this time it's six hits and uh, they're in the open uh, black dice is going to be the machine gun team and that looks like one kill in the Bren team and uh, four additional points of shock just check and see if it's the junior leader no, it isn't. Okay, that means that the Bren team is now pinned. Okay, uh, now it's the British phase. I think it uh, realistically needs uh, a double phase. Fortunately, it doesn't get one, and uh, that's not a great roll at all. Two to the second chain of command dice takes it to four, and a one and a four. Right, with a one, we're going to try and drop smoke on the farm building. 
Uh, not successful. Right, the smoke unfortunately has fallen uh, left of the target. Okay, we've got the senior leader, so we're going to do the same thing. Covering fire with the Bren team, and then we're going to move both of these, well, we're going to move the section, the full section, um, forward, I think. Realistically, we're going to just have to do that uh, as a normal move rather than moving tactical, and we're going to move the rifle team behind it tactically. So two dice for the uh, first section, so it can move seven inches. The rifles may as well just move uh, normally. It's not really any advantage with tactic because the uh, the Germans will just fire at the one that's not moving tactically, so uh, they move four inches. Well, we can see what the British are trying to do. Uh, we've got three clear sections moving. Fortunately, they're still the wrong side of the bridge, and uh, we've got the German phase, and uh, we still have completely intact German squads here in the woods and up here in the farm. German phase. And uh, fortunately, uh, they haven't got a five, or fortunately for the British, so they can't use the uh, off board machine gun. They do have uh, two fours, two threes, and a one, uh, so certainly all three of their uh, squads can fire. So with the Germans we've got two threes and a four, so uh, for the threes here the two sections are going to fire at the Bren team. Uh, that means they'll get it with uh, uh, Machine Gewehr also with their junior leader. And then further up at the farm we've got the senior leader who's going to order the squad to fire, uh, add in Machine Gewehr there. They are uh, uh, suffering from uh, some cover fire uh, there from the, from the Bren team, but uh, uh, ultimately, uh, there's going to be lots of dice now down uh, onto the uh, onto the British, and they'll fire at uh, the same target they were looking at uh, initially, which is the first of the sections getting across the bridge. Right, first uh, squad firing at the Bren team, needing fives. Uh, looks like they've got quite a few there. Looks like half a dozen, six hits, all on the Bren team uh, in soft cover. So uh, we're looking at four, five a shot, six to kill. Uh, we've got two killed and uh, two killed and three points of shock, so uh, they'll certainly break. They break uh, 2d6 plus 6, so uh, that's uh, 14, die, uh, 14 inches. So, bad thing, uh, team breaks. 6, I think, is a minus 1. I'm wrong there, it's minus 2, so the British are down to 7. Right, we'll have a change of target for the second squad. They're now going to fire at the two British mortar teams, needing fives. And that's uh, three hits. They're in light cover, so um, just distinguishing between the two teams. And uh, that's no effect. Germans firing from the farm, needing fours. We've got five hits, but there are actually four teams within four inches. So first of all, we're going to have two dice on the rifles in the front section. Uh, that's no effect. I'm giving them light cover. Okay, that's one point of shock. Now, uh, one dice on the pinned Bren team. No effect. One dice on the next rifle team. Oh, that's a kill. And one dice on the next Bren team. Now that's also a kill. Now we've got some uh, leaders uh, intermingled, so is it one of the leaders? No, it isn't. Okay, so it's the British phase. We're really looking for a, uh, a double phase, but we haven't got one. We've got two for the chain of command dice, so that takes the chain of command dice now to uh, two, two full dice. And we've got two threes and a four. Okay, I had got to a point where I think where I was going to abandon uh, the game really for the British because uh, I really think they're going to struggle to get across this bridge and then up towards that uh, point. However, uh, we've got two threes and a four, so um, we're going to try and have a go at firing up towards the farm and see if we get some kind of lucky break. So with the three, the junior leader is going to take two points of shock off the uh, Bren team in this unit, so they'll be able to fire with a four the senior leader is going to order all th all three sections uh, to fire up towards the farm and with the other three I'm going to move the Bren uh, carrier. Right, the Bren carrier can have uh, two dice uh, plus two inches each time. Uh, it can't go flat out because uh, it's going to need to make uh, one or two manoeuvres. 
see how we go there so we've got 10 inches right so there's a lot of fire towards the farm uh, we've got the first section which is uh, nine dice uh, needing fours uh, three hits um, in Soft cover really, uh, it's a bit of a mix about who can fire behind hard cover etc, so we'll say soft cover. Blue dice is the machine gun team, so it's just one point of shock. Next section is 12 dice, but needing fives. Right, some excellent shooting there, seven hits, so again in soft cover. Blue dice machine gun. Uh, so we have uh, one killed, and we've got uh, a point of shock to the rifles and the machine gun team. Uh, one killed, so let's just see whether it was the leader. No, it wasn't. Finally, seven dice needing fives on the third section. That's uh, three hits. Soft cover. No effect. Now, we're just going to have the German uh, phase. However, just before I do that, I'm going to interrupt and I'm going to fire one of the mortars to see if we can get some smoke uh, over that farm. So, let's see how accurate that is. So, right, it's right on target. So, we've used a chain of command dice, but we've dropped uh, smoke on that farm. German phase and so we've got two fours a five a one and a two. Okay with the five I'm going to use the off-board machine gun it's going to fire at the uh, back section uh, of the uh, the three for the British and then with a four I'm just going to use the, the senior leader to put uh, the two squads in here on overwatch they can't fire at the British at this moment because they're the wrong side of the bridge and also there's smoke uh, but as soon as they come onto the middle part of the bridge, they will be able to see them, and uh, they're on overwatch. Up at the top there, I could have used the senior leader. However, I don't think that it can take shock off during with, with smoke there, so uh, I'm not really going to use anything at all. So I'm going to keep the Germans where they are. They're not going to move out of that point because you can't really move in, in smoke either. So, yeah, all I'm using here is the... Uh, overwatch for that unit and then I'm going to roll 10d6 for the off-board machine gun. Okay, 10 dice uh, needing fives. And that looks like we've got one, two, three hits. It's all on the rifles, we're in soft cover. Uh, so that means we've got one kill and two points of shock. Is it the junior leader? Yes, it is. And what happens to him? Uh, he's knocked out. Actually, I've realised I've got a junior leader and a senior leader there, so we'll see which one of them is knocked out. Um, one, two, three, it's the senior leader. Uh, yes, it is. That's certainly a bad thing, so senior leader wounded. On a one, might just be minus one. Yep, that's a minus one, so uh, the British are down to six. British phase. And we've got... Uh, a good roll really, uh, a four, two threes and a two. I was really looking for uh, a one amongst that roll so uh, I could uh, fire smoke. Uh, so I'm going to interrupt again, uh, I'm going to fire smoke uh, and see whether uh, we can uh, drop this in front of the German machine gun. So let's see how accurate the, day the roll is. So four, let's have a check of that. Right, so uh, I do have line of sight, so with a four you can drop where, you're at, where you want it as long as you have line of sight, and here it is, so uh, that's where the smoke will land, which is going to obscure the vision for, uh, for the Germans in that position. Right, it's good rolls in terms of movement, so with the three the junior leader is going to take off a couple of points of shock at the front, senior leader is going to take one point of shock off with the Bren team, and order both sections to move. We're also going to have the uh, section at the back there moving as well. Right, I'm going to move the Bren team first. So it's a 2d6 plus four, uh, plus four inches, so we move 12 inches. Right, I'm going to move all the British units at the double going across this, uh, this bridge. So, first section, going to move 12 inches. Right, now the first unit uh, have made contact with the Germans, there's all sorts of calculations to make uh, here, so I'm just going to roll for the second uh, section and then work out the fighting afterwards. Now, this one uh, is right behind them, so they're going to be close enough to the Germans too. Um, so yeah, we're just going to need to work out what, uh, what happens, which could be quite complicated. Third section. Uh, again, they're uh, right up onto the uh, bridge as well. Now, 
uh, despite the fact that the Bren carrier has come into view uh, over here, just the other side of the river, I'm going to say that what actually happens is that the British attack over the bridge. They make contact with the Germans uh, at the side of the wood here. And I'm going to say that all units are involved in the contact, in the melee. Uh, the, they're all together essentially these two German squads and these the two first British sections I'm not including the one at the back there obviously and we're just going to calculate uh, an overall uh, engagement here I think uh, the writing's on the wall for the British but I'm just going to calculate it that way rather than trying to go into uh, individual engagement etc. I'm also thinking that the Germans can't fire. Um, the British get over the bridge, get very close to the Germans straight away, uh, past the smoke so yeah I think this is going to be the last thing of the uh, the game is going to be one uh, large uh, scrap really and we'll see what we get as a, a final calculation so I'm going to work out the dice and go from there. Okay I've used all the dice I've got for this uh, engagement. We've got two German squads so let's just talk through the numbers. We've got nine men in each squad, so you get 18 dice there. Both have got a light machine gun, so that's four dice for each. This side we've got six dice, and that is for the fact that we've got three submachine guns being used. The red dice is that we've got uh, junior leaders, two junior leaders there. We've also got a senior leader, so that's what that three dice is for. And then we've also got three dice uh, which is for the uh, British movement. So, when we add all of that up, we then get an additional dice, one for every three, which means that the Germans get an additional 14 because they're defending light cover. So in total, we end up with 58 dice. Actually, I've got some great news for the British. Uh, the Germans actually only have 56, not 58. I've just added that uh, up again. So let's just look at the British numbers. Uh, we have uh, 10 for uh, the men in total. We've had to make some deductions for shock. You lose one man for each two points of shock, and we've got six. So we have 10 there. Now we've got two junior leaders and a senior leader, so that gives us another seven. We also have, with the uh, British, two light machine guns, so that's eight. So in total, we have 25. So we've got 56 plays, 25. And the way we do it is that uh, a six and a five is a kill. A six is an additional point of shock. Okay, let's start off with uh, 56 German dice. Right, at the end of that, we end up with 22 casualties. Right, let's see how the British do. Well, I think in the end, it's only six. So, uh, I'll just work out all of the bad things that need to happen to the British here. Right, at this point, I'm going to call a halt to the uh, game. Uh, I was wondering whether we might get some kind of miraculous roll, but in actual fact, we didn't. The British lost both sections. Uh, we would have had at least... Um, bad rolls for two sections lost and then we would have had three or potentially four uh, junior and senior leaders being wounded it'll definitely take us down to it's a naught so rather than have a video for another 10 minutes rolling dice there's no point in uh, in doing that uh, the reality is that uh, it's been quite a good game but I, I made it a, a really a mission impossible for the British to try and do this my original thought was uh, the attack would be to put a lot of smoke down in order to get the British over the bridge but I didn't really have uh, particularly good rolls for that and I wanted to get ideally the Bren carrier to be the first thing that uh, got across the bridge with the infantry to follow and cause some kind of chaos that way but uh, uh, unfortunately the Bren carrier couldn't even get across the, uh, the hedgerow at the start so as it stands I wasn't really able to uh, isolate the Germans and didn't inflict any casualties uh, in which to uh, mean that when we got over and made an attack that they would be depleted. Right, so it just leaves me uh, to say thanks very much for watching. I hope you enjoy the video. If you've got any uh, thoughts from it, then please put some comments on the 
uh, comments uh, area on the YouTube channel. Uh, if you haven't subscribed as yet, then uh, please subscribe to the uh, channel, see if we can get up uh, now to almost 600 uh, subscribers. And that's great because we then get some really good comments and thoughts about how we might put together different games or improvements on this one. And uh, yeah, helps me to uh, shape my thoughts in terms of the next game that we play. Okay, so thanks once again and uh, we'll speak soon.